He's the senior recruiting analyst, part of the Rivals.com network. He joins us here every Wednesday at 9.30 for the Bama Football Recruiting Report. Bone, you ready to roll? I'm ready. Let's start with Jamel Burroughs, the uh, four-star defensive tackle out of McEachern High School in Powder Springs, Georgia. Previously a Georgia commitment. Uh, he decommitted and expected to make a, uh, a decision on his college destination this week, I think even today. Uh, what's the latest on the big 6'3", 320-pound defensive tackle? Well, you're right. Jamil Burroughs is uh, announcing his commitment today, and it will happen around uh, should have happened around 11 uh, a.m. Central. Um, I expect him to choose uh, Alabama. I've been expecting it for a while, been expecting it ever since he uh, decommitted from Georgia and probably before he decommitted from Georgia. Um, he visited Alabama several times, including um, both the cookouts during the summer. He was in Tuscaloosa um, a few weeks ago for the Ole Miss game. Uh, he was over in Atlanta for the first game of the season against Duke. So, uh, so he's been around the program a lot. And I think it's just you know kind of been a matter of time, um, you know, when he was going to commit. Uh, you know, not if, and um, he set a commitment date. Um, you know, a few days ago for today, which was kind of surprising because um, you know we had been hearing that. He was probably going to wait until December, um, you know, kind of focusing on, um, you know, on his football team and, and uh, you know, some stuff off the field with, uh, with you know, his, uh, his classwork and stuff like that. But um, looks like he's ready to go ahead and announce. And, um, you know, I expect him to choose Alabama today. You know, he's an outstanding prospect, and certainly it's a big pickup for Alabama. Uh, even in this new age of spread football and throwing the ball so much, you still just can't get enough defensive linemen. you got to have them if you're going to be a championship-caliber program. So it's a big pickup if indeed he does choose Alabama. But there is concern, I understand, still about Tim Smith, another outstanding defensive uh, lineman that's committed to Alabama from down in the Sebastian River in Florida. The problem there is Florida – has really gained some some leverage with Smith. Uh, how do you feel about him sticking with with Alabama, or do you feel like Florida is really a, a serious threat here to flip him? Yeah, I think uh, I think he's definitely one to kind of watch out for um, in, in terms of his interest in Florida. He's been to Gainesville, I think, three times uh, since his commitment to Alabama, and um, you know, hasn't been back up to Tuscaloosa now. Uh, a little bit tougher to get to uh, to Tuscaloosa uh, than Gainesville from uh, Sebastian River in Florida, uh, but he will make it a return visit up to Tuscaloosa uh, for an official visit. You know, not not sure exactly when he's going to take that visit just yet, but you know, I would expect him back in Tuscaloosa at least one one time during this football season, and may take the official after the season, but. Uh, you know, Florida's really turned up the heat on him. Uh, you know, he's been a top priority for them for a very long time, and Alabama just has to continue to um, you know recruit him as if he's not committed. Um, you know, that's what you got to do um, with a lot of these uh, kids who are committed. Uh, it, with them taking official visits elsewhere and, and getting heavy interest, you know, you never want, really want to slack on on uh, you know the kids that you really want, the kids that you really. Feel like can make a difference because you, you definitely don't want to don't want to lose them. And Alabama's got a really good defensive line class, but um, you know they want to they want to make it better. They need to get more numbers. There's still um, you know a few guys out there that they're heavily recruiting, and you know Timothy Smith is um, you know definitely a, a centerpiece of this recruiting class. And they don't uh, on the defensive line, and uh, and they don't want to lose his commitment. What's your gut telling you? And I, and I know that's a tough question because you you follow this based on information, but you've done it so long, you, you, you have a feel. I know an innate feel for what you think will happen with a prospect. When it's all said and done, you think Smith winds up at Alabama or Florida? Ooh, that's tough. Um, I mean, I, I would be very weary of, of Florida right now because and I know there's some that, out, that are out there that are saying, Oh, uh, there's nothing to worry about. He's just enjoying the process. Well, you, you don't enjoy the process and, and make multiple trips um, down to one school as opposed to the school that you're committed to. If you're not strongly interested in that program, you're, you're not you're not a top program. Now, if Florida was kind of you know just having an average OK season, you know, I, I would say I feel very confident that he would sign with Alabama, but. With uh, with Florida performing at a very high level this year, I mean they had a 
you know, performed, you know, really good down in, uh, you know, down in Baton Rouge. Um, you know, they had a, uh, you know, a big win against Auburn uh, a few weeks ago, which uh, Timothy Smith w- was at that game. Um, I can't say. I mean, I, I wish I could say yes, Alabama, or yes, Florida, but I, I think it's I think it's a toss up right now. Um, I know that's kind of a cop out, but um, you know, I, I just I, I'd like to see them make it make it back to Tuscaloosa and then kind of you know see where things are after that visit because you know once you get back to Tuscaloosa uh, or any school for that matter, um, you know, if you're starting to waver a little bit or you're looking at other programs, once you get back to that school that you're committed to you get that feeling once again that, okay, this is why I committed to this program. Mm-hmm. This this is what made me fall in love with this place in the beginning. So uh, I think the biggest thing is Alabama just needs to get him back on campus right now because if, if it were today, if he had to choose today, I might lean Florida. But once he gets back to Tuscaloosa and, you know, gets back around the coaching staff and, uh, you know, just being around the program in general, um, you know, I could easily say, all right, it's a done deal. He's sticking with Alabama. Yeah, and it's not a cop out, Boney. It's just a toss up. Like you said, it's too close to call right now. And we'll just continue to watch this one. Boy, if you could get Burroughs and Timothy Smith in the same class, wow. Let's get to running back. Clearly, um, Alabama has two really good ones uh, committed. Roydell Williams is living up to all the hype. I mean, he's just lighting people's rear ends up in class 6a this year in region four i mean what he did to bessemer city last week criminal when you consider andrews al's team came in undefeated and he ran through them you know like a hot knife through the proverbial uh you know warm roll uh i mean he just uh butter roll he just did it and kyle edwards tremendous back but at bama wants one more that's clear and they're trying to get another running back involved with several of them uh one guy though that Seems now to kind of be back on the radar as Zach Evans, uh, the outstanding running back out of out of Texas. It looked like for a while that Alabama might be the leader, then Georgia, then it looked like Alabama maybe had things had cooled between the Tide and Evans. But now you're saying uh, that you think he might show up in Tuscaloosa this Saturday for the Tennessee game on an unofficial visit. What's the latest? Well, that's the plan for him, at least for now. Is uh, you know the number one running back in the country, Zachary Evans, is uh, expected back in Tuscaloosa this weekend. But you know, at the same time, he's uh, he has been expected to to you know he was expected to be at the opening. He didn't go. He was expected to be at the five the rivals five star challenge. Didn't show. He was expected at LSU this past weekend for the Florida game. Didn't show. So you never know what may happen with uh, with Zach Evans. But uh, but as of right now. He does plan on being in Tuscaloosa this weekend, so we'll see if he actually uh, makes it on campus um, or not. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that would be big to get him on campus this weekend. Um, yeah, he hasn't visited since June. And uh, when he took that visit to Alabama in June, um, there was a lot of buzz. I mean, a lot of buzz that he was a heavy lean to Alabama, that he was um, closing in on a commitment, uh, that he was going to commit before the end of the summer, and that it was going to be Alabama. And um, and then it just started to fade a little bit. He took visits elsewhere, visited you know A and M, Texas, Georgia, LSU, and um, you know I think we've seen at least three of those programs um, <laughs> as the leader uh, since then. You know he was a heavy lean to uh, to Georgia in uh, in August. Um, you know A and M, you know it looked like he was going to A and M in September. Um, you know LSU is starting to get a little bit of buzz. Uh, right now, of course, Alabama is still right there in the thick of things. So, um, you know, he's another kid who's a uh, you know complete toss-up as to what he will do. And and I've said this for a long time. I've said I would not want to be the the school that gets his commitment first because um, unless it's on signing day when he signs, um, because I think he's um, you know he's just kind of unsure of, of what he wants to do. If he commits, I think he's still going to take all five of his official visits. Um, and, and still get recruited by by all the schools that are out there that are that are still heavily pursuing him. So we'll see if he makes it to campus this weekend. But it would be big for uh, for him to him to visit and you know get back around the coaching staff and and see a lot of people that he knows. Um, you know, not just uh, coaches but players as well. But, um, you know, he's not the only running back that's expected on campus this, this weekend. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, who uh, we talked about last week. Um, Running back commitment for, for Georgia Tech out of uh, Dalton, Georgia, 
Uh, he's going to be on campus this weekend. And I'd I'd be very uh, you know very interested to see what happens with him this weekend as far as an offer goes. I, I think there's a good chance that um, if he makes it to Tuscaloosa, um, that he could get an offer from Alabama. He's having a unbelievable uh, senior season, and um, you know definitely someone that uh, has been on Alabama's radar for the last. Uh, month or so and um and i could potentially see him getting an offer this weekend outstanding in-state class uh, we've documented it alabama's doing really well in state my gosh uh roy dell um the moy kennedy robinson you go on and on but i want to ask you about a guy I, I, and i don't want to say underrated because i think that's the wrong term i think we all know how good a player he is but maybe just uh under the radar in terms of just you, you, you read about a lot of guys, and you don't see much about Kristen Story, the outstanding athlete out of Lynette High School who is um, who projects at a number of different positions. What kind of season is he having, Bone? Fantastic. I mean, he's putting up big numbers every single week. Um, yeah, he's, he's working at cornerback – or, excuse me, quarterback – and um, and working on the, uh, as a defensive back, so um, you know having a very good season. Um, you know, don't know his exact numbers, but um, of course he texts me just about every single week. Um, you know his stats on Friday nights, and um, you know he's doing it with both his arm and his legs. And um, you know I think he, he it almost seems like he averages about uh, you know four touchdowns in a, a night. So you know a great season. Um, you know, terrific athlete. Um, you know, definitely one of, uh, you know, definitely one of the best athletes in uh, in Alabama's recruiting class. Hey, listen, uh, we had a caller earlier um, wanted to uh, get through to Bone. You're welcome to call back in. We'll take some more phone calls. So we're going to do two segments with Bone today uh, because I want to get into some other other topics with him. So we can go ahead and take a break. Can you hold on through the break, Bone, so we can stay on time? No problem. All right, but if you want to call in and talk to Bone on the Bud Light Hotline, powered by Adams Beverages, you can do so at 205-342-9904. This is the Bama Football Recruiting Report with Senior Recruiting Analyst Andrew Bone from BamaInsider.com, part of the Rivals.com network. We'll be back with more from Bone right after this on Tide 100.9 FM. All right, let's get back out to Andrew Bone on the Bud Light Hotline. And as I said, Bone, we want to take a few calls and uh, Pat had called in earlier wanting to uh, ask you a question. Go ahead, Pat. You're on Andrew Bone. Hey, good morning, Andrew. If you could do me a favor, please, if you could compare the three uh, top running backs of Kendall Milton. Milton's a little bigger, uh, but his tape looked pretty good as far as being shifty, big as he is. And uh, Evans and uh, also Chase uh, McMillan. If you could compare those three, that uh, force, I would be grateful. Yeah, so uh, you know, three three running backs that Alabama's uh, you know been heavily involved in throughout the process. Um, you know, Zach Evans, um, you know, very, you know, very fast, very explosive. Um, you know, he's got good size, good talent. Um, you know, got kind of everything you you look for in a uh, you know in a running back. Um, I mean, he just. It's very explosive. I mean, a really, really exciting back. I mean, I, I thought he was one of the best running backs in the country, you know, not just as a senior, but as a, as a junior. I would have put him probably in the five-star category as a junior. Um, you know, Jace McKill- McClellan um, is probably, you know, a little bit smaller, um, you know, 5'11", 190 pounds, uh, but he's very quick, very agile, uh, does a great job of, um, you know, catching the ball out of the backfield. Um, you know, another – you know, very explosive type type kid, um, and then with Kendall Milton, you know, a little bit bigger body, um, you know, very strong, uh, very, runs great in between the tackles. But uh, but as you said, he uh, he's got the speed to bounce it outside, and um, and also can catch the ball as well. But you know, three excellent running backs, three guys that uh, that can be very great at the next level, and uh, you know, I think all three have a chance to have you know very good careers. All right, Pat, does that get you covered? Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. That if any one of the three we got would be a home run. Have a blessed day, Andrew. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Bone, I want to ask you about um, this class because we're just so accustomed to seeing Alabama in that one or two spot. And and I think this class is just shaping up to be terrific. But in the latest Rivals rankings, Alabama is fourth 
behind Clemson, Ohio State, and LSU with 22 commitments, just one five-star, 17 four-stars, which leads the way, uh, three, three, or four three-stars. Uh, what does Alabama need to do? Who, who you know, of course, Burroughs could come later this morning. To get that number one class, is it mathematically possible still? Can, can Alabama launch itself um, from number four to number one? ahead of those three teams, or is this a year where, you know, just a, a top five is looming and not a, not a top one or two class? Well, I, I think, you know, I think you look at the classes right now and, you know, especially Clemson and Georgia, you know, what's going to happen with, with, uh, with their classes, um, you know, Clemson sitting at number one, but, um, you know, they've got an opportunity to, uh, to add some big names, guys like Justin Flo, Jordan Burt, those are two five-star kids that a lot of people are kind of projecting will end up at Clemson. Um, but, you know, Alabama, right there in the mix with Jordan Burch as well. Uh, they're in the mix with Eric Gilbert. What if Alabama is able to flip Rakeem Jarrett, five-star wide receiver who's committed to LSU, who's taking an official visit to Alabama next weekend? Um, what's going to happen with final rankings, um, you know, in terms of uh, player rankings? Um you know, will some of these guys who are committed to Alabama move up? Will some move down um, elsewhere? So there's a lot that can happen between now and signing day, between now and, you know, when the uh, recruiting national champion is crowned in, uh, in February, that first Wednesday in February. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that Alabama's got a chance, but they're going to have to close strong. I mean, mm-hmm. they're going to have to get uh, Eric Gilbert on board. They're going to have to, you know, potentially flip Rakeem Jarrett, maybe get. Um, Zach Evans. Uh, so there's a lot of guys that are still out there that that are strongly looking at Alabama. Guys that can can really make this class um, you know very special. Uh, you know I didn't I, I guess I didn't mention Jordan Burch as well. So um, you know those are some guys that Alabama gets those guys. You, you potentially have you know five five star commitments in the recruiting class, and um, you know that could certainly challenge for the number one overall spot. Andrew Bone with us with the. Bama Football Recruiting Report. JR is on the Bud Light Hotline and wants to talk uh, with you, Bone. Good morning, JR. Good morning, Kerry. Andrew. Hey, JR. I to ask, yes, I wanted to ask you um, when it comes to the recruiting, who do you feel is the, uh, the best recruiter on Alabama and overall in the NCAA? But before I, you can answer that, also I wanted to know. What do you feel like is the best tool for the uh, recruiting? Is it the facilities, the coaches, the track record, the girls? What? All right, Jr. <laughs> good question. Uh, let's good questions. Let's start with the best recruiter on Bama staff, Bone. Uh, it's a good question. Who do you think it is? Man, there's a uh, you know I, I would probably you know I, I, I'd lean probably South and Siri. I mean, I, I think he's yeah, he's uh, hard to beat. Unbelievable. I mean, I really do. I think he's unbelievable. I mean, Alabama's got some great recruiters on the staff. There, there's no doubt about it. But but Sal, the way that he builds relationships with prospects, and, you know, I always go back to Quandarius Robinson, um, the number one player in the state, um, who committed to Alabama. Um, you know, I always heard it was going to be very hard to say no to Alabama because of South and Siri. Um, and he just has built a tremendous relationship with a lot of these uh, top recruits. I think he does a great job. I mean, he helped land Demoy Kennedy as well. So, um, you know, getting you know the two top two players in the state of Alabama this year, um, which you know some people may say, oh, that that's easy to do because you're in state and uh, it's Alabama. But you know, we got to think both those kids were committed to Auburn. Demoy Kennedy and Quandarius Robinson were both committed to Auburn. So being able to uh, you know, get those guys on board. I, I think South and Siri certainly has um, you know built a strong reputation in Tuscaloosa this year. Um, yeah, going over to um, you know what the biggest factor. Uh, you know, when kids make their decisions, I mean, it's a it's a ton of things. I mean, I, I think a lot of schools have great facilities, uh, so it's hard to say. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I don't really hear kids saying, "Oh, you know, the facilities were unbelievable," because. You know, a lot of the top kids, especially the ones that Alabama recruits, well, they're also getting recruited by Georgia, by Clemson, by LSU. Um, you know, they see top facilities. They see great facilities that, you know, every time they go on a visit. So that's that's nothing new. I, I, but I think, uh, you know, 
the NFL track record, um, you know, putting guys into the league. I think, um, you know, you know, when their parents come on campus, you know, I, I think the parents, you know, love the academic uh, stuff and, and, and learning, you know, how their kids are going to get taken care of, um, you know, on and off the field. But, uh, you know, I definitely think, you know, coaching record, you know, helps a lot in stability. Um, you know, you look at Nick Saban, um, you know, being at Alabama for such a long time, and you know, a lot of people want to make, um, you know, all, all this fuss about, you know, well, assistant coaches, um, you know, come and go. It's a revolving door of, of assistant coaches at Alabama. Well, you know, the one constant is Nick Saban, and that's what, uh, you know, that thing that recruits talk about the most is, is Coach Saban and, and the way he runs his program. And, you know, despite all the coaching turnover uh, from the assistant coaches and coordinators, um, you know, the, the train keeps on rolling. I mean, nothing really ever changes. I mean, Alabama's you know, currently sitting at you know, number one. They've been in the, in the uh, uh, college football playoff every single year. They've won five national championships. And, um, you know, it, it's not like there's been a major drop-off at all uh, with the program, and that's what recruits see. He also asked about the uh, top recruiter in the nation, and, I, and I'll put it to you this way because it may be a little easier. As a head coach, uh, is it Saban? Is it Dabo? Is it Smart? Uh, there's so many really top recruiting head coaches. Um, who do you think's the best? Well, it's hard not to say Nick Saban, um, you know, just because of the you know, the track record, all the number one recruiting classes, um, you know, his ability to, you know, not recruit just the state of Alabama or a five-hour radius, his ability to go, you know, to California or Texas or, you know, South Florida or Virginia or New Jersey, wherever it may be, um, and get the best recruit from that state. Um, you know, I'm not every program's not able to do that, um, you know. Kirby Smart's doing a ter- tremendous job, and, and but Georgia also has uh, you know a ton of talent in the state of Georgia. But but you look at Georgia, they're also able to they're starting to expand and, and go you know kind of all over the country and, and get top recruits. So you know of course Kirby Smart learned a lot from uh, from Nick Saban, and um, yeah, I think he's he's certainly trying to build his program uh, you know like Alabama, and, um, and and is and is right there, um, you know. Lincoln Riley out at Oklahoma. Um, I, I think with you know their offensive firepower, they're attracting a ton of top recruits from from outside the region. From you know they're getting recruits from the southeast to, that want to come to Oklahoma to, to play now. So um, you know I think he's doing a tremendous job. And obviously uh, Dabo Sweeney, um, Dabo is doing a uh, uh, obviously has a tremendous football program up there um, in Clemson and. Uh, and their their ability to recruit nationally, um, you know, getting top kids, um, excuse me, from uh, from California, like uh, DJ Wagalele, who's the number one rate, rated quarterback. All right, Bone, country. great stuff, man. I hate to cut you short, but we got to wrap it up. Uh, we're up against. That's the... All right, guys. Yeah. Uh, All right, you say yeah. Burroughs is going to going to commit at eleven central. Eleven central. Expecting so it to be Bama. BamaInsider.com. All right, folks, follow up uh, Bone at BamaInsider.com. Go there for the Burroughs commitment. Follow him on Twitter. And uh, catch him here Wednesdays at 930. Thank you, my friend. All right. Thank you.